CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by the United States Marine Corps. The change is forever. Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. And by Nike. The ninth-ranked Auburn Tigers in the top 10 and 16-0, joining Connecticut as the only unbeaten Division 1A basketball teams with a one-point lead over Florida here at halftime, along with James Worthy, Tim Brando. And you look at the two-guard position where Pullman and Jay Hurd off the bench, they've really taken up for quarter slack, 0 for 5 from the floor of the star junior college transfer. Yes, they have. They are the key of this ball club so far. If you look at what's been taking place, Jay Hurd coming off the bench with the great players. You see Doc Robinson's done a great job of pushing the ball up the floor. And once this young man gets his feet set, that's Jay Hurd shooting from the outside. He's deadly 4-4 in the first half already. And here he demonstrates that he can also pump fake and put the ball on the floor. So a very versatile player for the Auburn Tigers. You look at the numbers in the game to this point, James, and it illustrates that points off turnovers can be a key. Remember, Florida got seven quick points off turnovers. Then Auburn made its run, turned the tables, and to this point, uh, offensive and defensive boarding is a real key as you look at our DiGiorno halftime stats. Bottom line, this game will be won or lost with points off turnovers in the second half. That is no question. A lot of intangible, intangibles will decide this ball game. Loose balls, rebounds, deflections, how well they block shots or alter shots. All those things will make a win. How about the Mamadou Njai move by Cliff Ellis? Once Haslam got the effective post play, he went to Chiliest. He made his offense a bit more guard-laden, and he really matched up with Donovan's move. Yeah, plus Mamadou is not as strong as Chiliest is, so Chiliest was able to come in and establish a good defensive position. The style of play in this kind of game really does not help Njai in terms of having that much influence. That's correct. He's a player with block shots. He's not a great scorer. Florida has it to open the second half with Miller and Shannon, Wright, Haslam, and Kenyon Weeks on the floor. Nice spin move past Pullman. Shannon is fouled. That is a great ISO move by uh, Eddie Shannon attacking the basket. No one came to help early enough, and once you let a player like Annie Shannon get too far down in the paint, as you can see, great spin move on Pullman. I thought Pullman had good defense. No one really came over until late, and Porter picks up the foul. That's just his first. First Porter, as tough as he plays on the defensive end, that's his first foul. Yeah, you would expect a player that is as physical as he is and goes after block shots to have more fouls. And, uh, he's an aggressive ball player, but he's smart. Billy Donovan, the Gators coach, described him as relentless. He brings it on every play. And uh, we've seen that in evidence, particularly since he's been scoreless in the game. Pullman, a leaner. Too strong. Smith, who's playing with three fouls. Ryan Smith, a non-factor in this game due to foul difficulty. Tried to pull down that rebound. The first lead for the Gators since it was 17-15, halfway through the opening half. Now they're into executing on half court. They're moving the ball around. If you can remember in the first half, everything was transition, quick tempo. Now they're getting it back in the post. However, that charge was not part of Billy Donovan's deep offense, I don't think. Ryan Porter, again, establishing position. Brent Wright picks up his third. Well, he's just a very smart player. Brent Wright picking up his third. Porter plays within himself even when he knows that he's been uh, the focal point of the Florida defense. Yeah, just having him on the floor whether he's scoring or not, he's a threat. Off the back there, really his first good look. He's 0 for 6 now. I really think he's got to put the ball on the floor and go to the hole. No more uh, turnaround jump shots. No more outside perimeter game. He's got an ISO all the way through to the basket, put the ball on the floor. I believe that'll open up his game. Inchai out on the open floor, coming away with a pick along the perimeter, and then the foul given up by Weeks. Oh, well, Mamadou Inchai says, uh, you're going to pull me away from the basket? I'll let that wingspan get in the way and cause a turnover. Well, he's agile. He's very mobile. And uh, with, that, with that span, when he spreads his arms out, he can get a lot of deflection. Porter. 
Little reversal. And that's a good way to get your first basket. Go close. Get the chippy, and maybe the confidence will come next. Yeah, you go to the hole, you're only going to get the basket or foul. That's a good move by Porter, going strong to the back. Mark it down, his first basket, a minute and 55 seconds deep into the second half. Miller. And Brian Smith picks up the foul, his fourth. One of the seniors, Smith, has been uh, relinquished to... A non-factor today. Taking a look at Ford, he gets a good pick by Mamadou, but he doesn't settle for the five-footer. He puts it on the floor, takes it to the hole because he knows he's going to get a basket or he's going to get fouled. And sometimes when you haven't scored or having a bad night, getting to the line is also important and knock down a couple just to get your momentum going. Miller at the line. Well, you, if this game winds up an Auburn victory and it's close and we anticipate that it will be, the storyline may be Porter and Smith. Between them, they are one of eight in this game. Smith, the senior leader, second team All-SEC a year ago. Porter, the, the star of this club, who's pumped so much adrenaline into this 16-0 start. And yet, here they are against the good Gators team leading most of the way. Right, no question, Tim. You said it right. The Gators are a good ball club, but also being undefeated. Really puts a lot of pressure on you. And I think that's what we saw earlier from Porter and Smith. They try to do a little bit too much. Smith's in foul trouble. You can see Porter throws it away there. Weeks getting into the passing lane and gets an easy one. A rare turnover by Chris Porter. 46-44 Florida. Yeah, Chris Porter's just got to he's got to look to take the ball to the hole because right now he's in a daze. Uh, you know, he's not really getting open shots. Right now, he's got to go to the hole, create something for himself, maybe get a foul. He's going to definitely score. Good move, good spin move. He jumps enough, he elevates enough to shoot over people. So that was a good move for Chris Porter. Right for three. Brent Wright with the answer. Known as a slasher to the basket that time, taking the pull-up J. He has 10. 49-46 games. Just over three minutes gone by here in Auburn. Foul prior to the shot by Njai. Miller picking it up, coming on a double team against Mamadou Njai. First foul, The third team foul against the Gators. First against Mike Miller. Teddy Dupay checking in for Kenyon Weeks. And also Major Parker in for Miller, who sits down. Coach Bill Godwin trying to keep fresh players in. He knows how important it is to have you. The intensity up on defense, so he's constantly bringing in fresh bodies to compete with this Auburn team. And Major Parker got a hold of the jersey and quickly got a foul on that inbounds pass. It's always been, and Rick Pitino was this way way back in his Providence days, play 10 or 11 guys as Njai gets the basket. He has seven on the day. If you're going to play 10, then you can be relentless defensively if you don't mind giving up foul. Because you have enough fouls to give, guys can play aggressively take away some of the uh, high percentage shots and meanwhile quietly and methodically stick to their offensive game plan, which they've done. Shannon with the push by Pullman. It appears as if Billy Donovan now would like to isolate the floor a bit and allow Shannon to work against Pullman. Well, yesterday, Tim, you remember we talked to Coach Donovan, and he said it's very important to pick up some of the bonuses, and one of those was getting to the line. He said he likes his players to put the ball on the floor because he knows there's a high percentage he might pick up a foul of his players going to the basket. That's what happened with Eddie Shannon there. Jay Hurd's checked back in for Palmer, and Parker gets an easy one underneath. Specialty play off the inbounds. 51-48, Florida by three. They're right now, the Florida Gators are mentally into this game. Auburn is, uh, they're a little hesitant. They're still searching. The Florida Gators are playing some really good basketball right now. The momentum is on their side. Shannon, again, coming over to give help. And, uh, and Porter now, very critically, is letting Fishback know, hey, you got to let me know when their help defense is coming. you got to communicate. Porter knows it. Tigers trail by three. Tim Brando, James Worthy. Happy to have you with us. Four minutes gone by here in the second half. Florida with a three-point lead. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over a quarter of a century. Chris Porter 
you get a feeling that he just needs to make two or three in a row to get this team's confidence back. Well, I really believe he's a great player, and great players will emerge. He'll find a way, even though he hadn't done well shooting thus far. He's going to continue to go to the glass, get some offensive boards, block some shots. Those are the things he's got to do now to keep this Auburn ball club in the ball game. There you see Florida. They've outscored Auburn 33-15 since 5-12 and a half. The reason? They're 9 of 18 from three-point range and made six of their last seven, James. So the shooting from downtown has picked up in rural Auburn. Love. Inside, count it, and a foul. Mamadou can do. Mamadou can do and did it that time. Uh, Auburn doing an excellent job, as you see. A great pass between two defenders. Mamadou picking and rolling right to the hole. Excellent follow-up. Coming out of a timeout, that's just what Cliff Ellis wanted. That's right. Hurd did a good job of driving the gap and finding Mamadou. And Cliff Ellis says, look, guys, we're not a perimeter team. we got to go to the hole and get to the line. Brent Wright picks up his fourth. Also significant in this game. He's played well down low. 51-50, Gators by one. Dupay along with Stolt. Brent Wright is out there with four. Miller and Major Parker on the court now for the Gators. Good defense, and there's a war inside with Porter and Wright. Porter's just banging, and Wright's trying to get position. Physical basketball. Dupay trying to work on Robinson and can't. A lot of contact along the perimeter. Dupay can't hit. Look at that four. Boy, Porter just ripped it down. Eyes always up. There's her. Oh, it's getting busy down here in Auburn now. They're lighting it up from the outside. Jay Hurst has been a big factor. Followed up by great defense, good transitional defense. The Auburn Tigers are smelling the shift and momentum now as they have a two-point lead. Miller picking up the foul, his second. Bryant Smith and Coleman, two veterans, sharing the defensive effort. Heard, by the way, is now five of five from the floor. 14, four of his five buckets from downtown. Well, whenever your star player is a little cold or in a slump, it's always good to have a little mini microwave to come in and get the job done. That contact between Weeks and Fishback was getting a little... Too many elbows were beginning to fly, and quickly Curtis Shaw in there to call the foul. Got physical on the other end a moment ago. If, if you noticed, uh, Hurd and, and Dupay were getting with it. But Florida senses an opportunity to get some national attention. Let's face it, Billy Donovan told us last night a win over an unbeaten team puts his club in the top 25, sends a message there. Their two most noteworthy games this year were against Duke and Kentucky. They were buried both times. So all of their tough games have been on the road. And this is yet another, and to pull one off, it could really set the tone for the latter part of January and their run toward March. Yeah, it says a lot about Coach Billy Dahlem and establishing his, his team is not afraid to play anybody. You're right, if they beat Auburn here, that would be a big win for him. He's only lost to Kentucky and Duke, and this will be a huge win in the rankings for the Florida Gators. Here comes the crowd. Kenyon Weeks just never gave up on that play. Never gave up, and unfortunately, you had Hearn, who was kind of looking for the defenders. You see, he does a great job of playing the passing lane. Now he takes a quick look to see what a defender is out of the corner of his eye instead of going straight to the hole. That was just a clean pickpocket out. Good defense by Kip. That's another carry against Dupay. That's two times we've seen Traveling called for carrying the basketball. Once against Shannon and now against Dupin. 55-51. Porter trying to break the pressure. Coleman is back on the floor now for Florida. Doc Robinson taking a seat. Out of bounds. We saw Auburn 9-2 and two over the last three minutes. So they've outscored the Gators 9-2. To take this lead by four. Auburn number I really think when Porter gets the ball in the wing, they've got to clear out that whole side and take their defenders on the opposite side. Give him some room to operate because I don't think anybody can stop him. 
isolation. Heard was rejected and caught it out. This time also has it knocked away. And as he challenged the offensive board, he picked up the foul. First foul on Fishback. Fourth team foul against Auburn. Gators already have the Tigers in the bonus. They fouled seven times here in the early stages of the second half. it in from Major Parker, and that was a major dish. It was a major pass, but I like the way Weeks got the defender off of him, boy, I tell you. He stuck his elbows out there and then made a crisp pass in the middle for a very high percentage shot. Coleman getting the high pick from Mac McAdney. That's a spot to look out. Well, Tim, you were right on hand when you talked about that two-guard position. Coleman and Hurt have really been the key factors for Auburn's offense. McGadney and Pullman take a seat. I love the way Cliff Ellis is using his bench, particularly in the back court, not allowing really Shannon to get used to the matchup that he had. That's right, and if you send different defenders at players, it does take a few seconds or a minute or two to adjust to that defender because the different tendencies, different defenders play you differently. Robinson, little stop and go. Sweet move, unable to finish. That hit underneath the backboard. Curtis Shaw aware of it, and it belongs to Florida. That's an excellent call. Ball hit underneath the backboard. It automatically gives the ball to the Gators the other way. You really have to respect the job Cliff Ellis has done. Over the years, Clemson, predominantly a football school. Some say Auburn is uh, Clemson without a lake. He's come in and energized this uh, frenetic football town with basketball at a time when they really needed it here on this game. Well, oh, Tim, he loves to teach. He's a great teacher of the game, and he loves the challenge of rebuilding, and that's what he's done in every program he's been to. Parker turns it over. That's the 19th of the day for Billy Donovan's club. And that's not necessarily a high number given the way the game is played. If it's up around 25 by game's end, they won't like that. Yeah, you expect some turnovers in a game like this where there's a lot of defensive pressure and it's hard to move the ball around. Just take a look at how physical they're playing within 15 feet. They aren't allowing too many easy passes or shots. What's, in, what's incredible, James, is Auburn's only turned it over a half dozen times. Damian Fishback has eight, and the lead is seven for Auburn. Shannon, stutter step, again unable to finish. Haslam on the offensive boards, he's fouled on the way up. Haslam is just a, he's a work effort. We talked about Chris Porter before the game. The donuts has him, and you can see him talking to his teammates after every play. He's really into this ball game. He's strong, he likes to bang inside, and he's not afraid to mix it up. Official scorer just trying to make sure that the foul was in fact on Porter, and it was. His second. And Udonis Haslam at the line. Udonis Haslam has probably been the least publicized but most consistent of the freshman crop. He came in at 285 pounds. Wow. He's lost 40 pounds since coming in. Hey, you had better lose some weight if you're playing for Billy Donovan in the style that they employ. We got that right because it's quick tough ball. You gotta be able to play defense and move your feet. So heavyweight players are not gonna likely get a scholarship. <laughs> Good Lord. Heard in midair, he faked out his own teammate. The ball kind of slipped out of his hand. I don't know whether it was slippery or what, but he lost it. 60 to 54 Auburn. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Tim Brando, James Worthy, 60 to 54 Auburn with the lead. Florida is four of six in this half, James, but they've turned it over seven times. Auburn has countered by using its bench both Jay Hurd and Pullman. Scott Pullman, the sophomore from Roswell, Georgia, have ignited this team, and it really does come down to the two-guard position, Florida's inability to match up with those two guys. No question, you're on 16-0 with a great superstar like Porter in the inside game. Jay Hurd, Pullman have really set the tone. They've hit some big shots, high percentages, and also Cliff Ellison has done an excellent job 
of matching the effort of Billy Donovan. You look at Holman, the two guards, they're 9 of 13 and 7 and 8 from the three-point line. Between them, that's 25 points. So don't forget those two guys have made a big impact on this game thus far. Miller's been pretty quiet, as has Dupay in this half. And Njai just uh, ran right through the pick. <laughs> that guy looked like, uh, like Randy White on that particular play. Third foul on Njai. Now, Mamadou had not been home in some time, and last year they were playing in the NIT, and he wouldn't leave his team. Finally, after a year and a half, he went home just after his father passed away. Cliff Ellis was begging him to leave sooner, but his obligation to team really impressed him. Well, he made the comment. Mamadou said, look, if I'm here with my teammates, I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's saying a whole lot about it. Look at Porter's overplay, leading to the turnover. 20th of the game for the game. Just like you. Robinson, close pass Stolt, finds a wide open herd. Nice work by the pay. Robinson, driving baseline, gets the contact, and will get to the line. That's against Greg Stolt, his third foul. Well, Porter may not be getting a lot on the offensive end, but he's playing some defense. You see how physical they're treating him. Look at him. He's trying to establish some defense early, not giving up position, getting around. That's good work. Even though he's not scoring, he's keeping his team in it by good defense. I asked him before the game. Take a look at that, uh, that hairdo. Now, he, he had the corn roll working for a couple of games, and he... He stopped it, and I asked him, I said, does anybody give you any trouble about the hair? It's sort of 70-ish. And he said, no. I said, well, if the numbers stay where they are, they won't. He looks a little like Larry Keenan yeah. of Memphis State fame. From the right. The old ABA superstar. I'll tell you what. Keenan could dunk on you. He just told the world how old we really are. <laughs> Miller for three. Haslam on the offensive glass. And Porter reached in. May have had some contact. He did. But Porter really has his work cut out for him because Udonis Haslam at 260 pounds, and he's pretty mobile. He puts a lot of pain in the game when he mm -hmm. comes in there because he really throws himself around, and not afraid of contact, and he's going to create some fouls. Dupay throws up an air ball, and the student body quickly gets on Teddy. Coming up next, Syracuse at Georgetown, and then later today, Indiana at Purdue. Robert Knight and Mean Gene Cady getting with it in the Big Ten. Triple hitter going to college basketball here on CBS. Mean Gene Cady. Mean Gene. Hey. That game will not lack for intensity, at least on the sideline. <laughs> I've known Coach Cady ever since my old AAU days, and i got to tell you, he hasn't changed a bit. He's still Mr. Intensity at right? Purdue. Chilius picks up his second. Having a conversation with Curtis Shaw about it. And Haslam is back at the line. And the Florida Gators need to stick with Haslam for a little while because right now their perimeter game has gone cold and they cannot rely on that. They need to go back to what they were doing early in the game, trying to establish some post-up uh, position. And as you can see, when they do that, they at least get to the line. Stolt going after that offensive rebound gets the foul. So Stolt and some foul difficulty as well. And the move by Cliff Ellis to match Injai against either Stolt and Miller and not allowing Haslam to work against Mamadou inside has also been one of those subtle changes in coaching philosophy that really helped Cliff Ellis. Yeah, the thing about these two coaches is that they can spend the whole week creating a game plan. But somewhere during the game, they can throw that over their shoulders <laughs> and start coaching spontaneously. And that's what you like about these two coaches. They know their teams, they're smart, they're spontaneous, and they can deviate from that game plan and just start coaching spontaneously. That's what we're seeing here in the second half. Fishback has 10 off the Auburn bench. And the lead is back to 12, 66-54. 
Auburn led by only one at halftime. Unbeaten, along with Connecticut, the only two Division 1A unbeaten teams. Look at the defense. Look at the defense by Auburn. It really picked it up. Miller's not able to really penetrate. They're in the passing lane. They're just, the defense is really up. Stolt just blew that one up from the hip. And here comes the transition again. Robinson, a little stutter step. Too much first pace to that time. Finally corralled by Hurd. Robinson again trying to wheel and deal to Mamadou Unja, knocked away by the Gators. Robinson, Robinson needs to be just a little bit under control. He's going to places where there's nothing there. He really takes to, needs to take a look before he drives to the hole. Look at that. Auburn has outscored the Gators 20 to 5 in the last 720. And I think you're right. The outside shot has deserted Florida. There's Robinson. Boy, that's just a. That's just Florida going to sleep defensively. Going to sleep when your offensive game's not going, your defensive game, it gets flat. That's exactly what's happening to the Florida game. Timeout, a little damage control for Billy Donovan coming up. Yeah, he's five Beta Kappa, isn't he? 68 to 54, Auburn with the lead as you look at our game summary we touched on it earlier when you got transition teams it could come down to one stat that's right and we're talking about points off of turnovers you look at what the Auburn Tigers have been able to do off of the turnovers 25 points that's got to mean a lot as far as those bonuses and those intangibles that we were talking about earlier that along with the play of Jay Hurd has come in and Pullman he's pulling his weight as well at that two guard spot and the inability for Florida to do anything with the two guard position a real catalyst today yeah it's created some problems for Billy Donovan and uh, Pullman's also doing an excellent job on the defensive end he's done some stuff offensively but you watch him he's denying uh, Teddy T.J. right there good defensive by Pullman Kenyon Weeks looking for a pick from Stolt, decides to drive to the basket, and he picks up the foul. Hurd trying to check him in the low block. It's his second of the day. But as we mentioned earlier, a double-digit lead with the style of play of these two teams it would be uh, about, uh, I would say, a five- or six-point lead in a lot of games. No question. I mean, either one of these teams can get hot from the perimeter, and they can put up numbers so fast that you really need, like, a... 20, 25 point lead with about six minutes to go to feel secure. The senior captain, Brian Smith, back in the game, playing with four fouls. Hurd trying to negotiate. Dupay knocked it away. It had been deflected off of, of Hurd, but uh, apparently Ball. not. It will be controlled to Auburn underneath. Right. Udonis Haslam. Haslam checking back into the game. They can't keep him out too long. Brent Wright and Miller back on the floor as Stolt sits down along with Najee. And Dupay for the Gators. Bad pass. Bad pass. Picked off by Weeks. Remember, Smith has four. And it's an offensive foul. Player control. Nice job by the veteran. Playing with four fouls. Yeah, he got his feet together and established uh, his defensive position and was able to pick up the charge. Our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. There you see it, turnovers, 20 to 8 Gators. For complete college basketball coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Here comes the pressure from Florida. Shannon working on Robinson. Each trip down now, Cliff Ellis would love to see a little time off that shot clock. And uh, they'll get a fresh 35 now as Shannon kicked it. But right now it's important for Florida not to panic. I mean, there's still enough time in this ball game for them to execute their offense and get back in and chip away at it. And the same thing for Auburn. They're not in a hurry to do anything. They need to just concentrate, execute, and get some easy buckets. Porter working against Wright. Oh, that's a power move. It's just not his day. I mean, Bird with the answer. That ball from Porter was a great move. He used the glass. It was halfway through the cylinder and popped out. Yeah, forget he missed it. This young man is strong inside. Porter is. 70 to 54, largest lead for either team this afternoon. 
Bruce Benedict spots a foul. Apparently off the ball. Yeah, getting back to Porter, forget about him missing the bucket. Look how strong he is going to the basket. Really does a great job of dropping that left foot and getting an edge on his man. He's not having a good day offensively, but he's still working hard, and that's the way you come out of a slump. He won't be in this long. Adonis Haslam at the line. Haslam. 62% from the stride. The Gators have had their chances today at the free throw line. He's only three out of seven on the day. Oh, he used all of the rim. 70 to 56. Length of the floor. There we go. The patented slam of the floor. Look out, here comes the crowd on the plane. His Porter's been working on defense and rebounding. He deserves to get the crowd into the game. He's been waiting for that monster dunk. Halton silences the crowd. 72 to 58. Building is ready to explode if Porter can hit two or three in a row. Robinson double team. There he is again. Count it. There he is. This is what gets the crowd going. Actually, that's the that's the foul, a possible three-point play. And here's the one that got him in the ball game, got the crowd going. It was a master dunk by Chris Porter. Here we go right here. He's not cherry picking, he got out on the break for an easy hypersold shot. 75-58. Unbeaten. Connecticut, the only two that can make that claim. And the crowd really enjoying it now. Seven nineteen remaining in our game. And this is the largest lead of the day. Porter in the second half, four out of seven for nine points. Still really shooting in tough luck. Shannon to the cutter Miller. Haslam. Well over the back of Chilius that time, picking up the foul. And you get a sense now that Florida's pressing just a bit. Yeah, they are. You know, they're desperate. They're behind. Um, and that's what happens. You, you forget about your game plan. You start playing random basketball, making more fouls, giving up easy buckets. You lose your concentration. And that's something uh, very indicative of a young ball club. They're going to learn from this game if they, uh, if they don't come back. But... Uh, They've given up their, their game plan and, and, and gone to just random play, which is which is not really Donovan's basketball. One of the things that Billy's done with this young team is he let them take their medicine. Against Duke, he never changed the style of play. Cameron Crazies were all over them. Remember, they beat their last win over a top 10 team, came on the road at Kentucky last year. So Kentucky had some payback earlier this season. And uh, they were whipped pretty soundly. And Billy Donovan, again, wanted the young players to experience it because so many of these young guys, particularly the ones that are highly thought of, they've never been decimated quite like that. <laughs> never experienced what college basketball, big college basketball, is all about. Shannon trying to negotiate against Doc Robinson. They have just cut off the passing lanes. This Tiger defense. This is all about coaching now, because you see the intensity of the defense of the Auburn Tigers. They're up. Cliff Ellis really has his team in sync. They're playing good defense with this big lead. The shot clock winding down, a poor shot. And who's on the board? Big Chris Porter. Heard a leaner. Wright brings it down. Still over six minutes to play. Alton's pass knocked away again by Smith. Nothing easy. Nothing up. easy. They're not getting any three-point shots, which they love to shoot, and they're not getting any inside uh, high-percentage shots either. i got to tell you, this defense is really sticky right now. Alton cans a three. He has seven in the game. Coming up next, Syracuse at Georgetown, and after that, Indiana at Purdue. Triple hitter day here on CBS Sports. Auburn gets a quick 20-second timeout. Cliff Ellis' team really seized control in the opening five minutes of this second half, and they did it 
with defense. Yeah, and what he's telling them right now is, look, guys, you got the lead. Looks like you're going to win. Don't get sloppy. Let's use this time to prepare for another game that might be a little closer. Five minutes left in this ball game. They really need to stay focused and concentrate. Auburn 60% from the floor, 12 of 20 in this half. Rebound finally pulled down by Najee. The fellas wanted to travel, did not get it. Miller has just never really gotten in a rhythm today. Well, they've done a good job of defending him. He likes to put the ball on the floor, and Brian Smith was just taking him out of the ball game, sliding his feet, not allowing him to put the ball on the floor. And if you recall, Njai also checked in when Smith got into foul difficulty. Shannon for three. Najee the rebound. And he will load up again. He struggled from beyond the arc. That's one aspect of Eddie Shannon's game. He's more of a slasher. You can slough off when he looks to launch from downtown. He's a streaky shooter. That means he's got to hit one or two before he feels confident. Only 37% from downtown this year. Miller sits down. Alton, Najee, Shannon, Brent Wright, and Major Parker now on the floor for Billy Donovan's team. Smith lost it. Nice work by Brent Wright. Shannon leaves it. Rejected. Nice work by Fishback to knock that one away. Again, nothing easy down low. up for three. He's gotten a little playground this year in the last couple of sequences. Yeah, I'm not sure about the shot selection for the Florida Gators now. Still a lot of time left. And you know they can put some numbers on the board, but they really got to get some better shots than what they're taking the last minute or so. Robinson. Oh, oh, little finger roll from 10 feet away. A little shot put. And this is a guy that really doesn't look to score as much, but he's capable. And tonight, if he gets into that paint, he's got to throw up that little five-foot runner. Gators have missed six in a row. He actually took that one up to the glass about ten feet away. When he finally let it let it fly, he was about five to six feet away. Soft touch by Doc Robinson. Wright. Brent Wright stepping out. Has a dozen. And careless with the basketball that time, the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, see, and all four has got to do is get some buckets, get this thing to ten. And hope, oh, good, not, a, not a smart move by Wright pushing underneath. Porter almost went into the cheap seats, and that's Brett Wright Smith foul. Yeah, there's, there's such a thing as a, a little push, but that was a WWA push there. <laughs> well, they have one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a WWF. What is yeah, it? World right. Wrestling Federation? That one, let's see. <laughs> there's that one. There's uh, there's uh, NWO. There's I, I, I can't keep Porter up anymore. Porter with nine points and six boards, but again, all of that in the second half. But we we touched on this yesterday. You and I were talking. Steve Francis is probably, well, clearly the number one junior college talent to come into NCAA play this season. But I dare say he doesn't make the others around him better as much as Porter makes his teammates better. You're absolutely right. Porter uh, ignites this ball club. They play around him. They, he really gets them charged up. And so you're right. He benefits the players around him. He's also charged up better than 10,000 here at Auburn. And they lead by 17. The atmosphere has never been better at the Doral Eves Memorial Coliseum on the campus of Auburn, Alabama. When you're unbeaten and you've got these kinds of statistics to surround that 16-0 record, that'll uh, make for a good environment. Yeah, all the important ones, particularly steals and the rebounding margin, but look what they're allowing their opponents to shoot from the field. That's exceptional good defense by the Auburn Tigers. They'll go a long way with these statistics. Hey, you look at it too, Cliff Ellis's uh, teams through the years, even as great teams, were not necessarily known for their defense, but he always had power guys. You know, you think of Dale Davis yeah. and 
Horace Grant at, the, at Clemson. This is uh, this is perhaps the best perimeter talent he's ever had. Yeah, he's always had big guys in the paint that could block shots. Now he's got a combination of that and perimeter defense, and they make it real stingy when you're playing against the Tigers. Stolt is 0 for 5 today. He's really had his game taken away. And they rely on him for offense off the bench. Dupay can't hit. Injai lost it. Doc Robinson and Stolt running after it. I think Greg got it intentional that time. You know, Greg Stolt has had a great attitude about coming off the bench. And I guess it makes you wonder whether he wants to start or, or what, because obviously he hadn't been in the game tonight coming off the bench. Yeah. That's something I think Billy Donovan is going to have to think about as the season progresses. He's going to have to wonder whether he can put Stolt in the game earlier to get him going because he's been out of the game tonight. Many times for Stolt, if you think about it, this is a, a young player that relies heavily on his clean jump shot and getting a rhythm. And after being a starter, you make an excellent point, James. I'm, I'm of the belief that there are some teams that, from a matchup standpoint, you may need him on the floor to start a game. Absolutely. I think there are going to be games when he has to start. There are going to be times when he can come off the bench. Mm -hmm. And I think he's he's accepted that role. But with a great shooter, a great player like Greg Stoke, you got to watch his mood and his mm -hmm. energy level because he's a player that's effective, but you got to use him effectively. By the way, Doc Robinson, who was at the line, now has a quiet double-double. 14 points and 10 assists. It's been good guard play for the Auburn Tigers all around. With Hurd, Coleman, and Doc Robinson also sharp coming in and giving a little bit from the point guard position. Doc uh, feeling uh, <laughs> as though he could get away with one that time. On the reach, is whistled for the foul. And you know, in talking to, you know, the guys yesterday, Porter, Robinson, Smith, these guys really, really like each other. They go to the movies together, they eat together, and that makes for uh, something that you don't see on the stat sheet, the stability in the locker room. That's crucial at this level of basketball. You look at the Southeastern Conference and the wake-up call in the West with Auburn's development, the infusion of young coaching talent like uh, Mark Godfrey of Murray State, now to Alabama, John Brady at LSU, and they just got Stromile Swift eligible there. The Western Division of the SEC is one of the more improved portions of a league that you could find in the country. That's true. The emergence of the SEC in the last couple of years has really caught the country's attention. You look at what Kentucky is doing. You just don't hear about Kentucky anymore. You hear about Auburn and others in the SEC. Right. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Udonis Haslam from the University of Florida and Jay Hurd from Auburn University. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for 28 years. And Tim, we talked about the Auburn guards making a contribution. You look at what Hurd, Holman, and Doc Robinson have been able to do. Hurd's got 18 points, Holman has 11, and Doc Robinson has 14 points and 10 assists. So very good productive job from the guards of Auburn today. Darius Halton gets the roll. Nine in the game for him. 83-67. Third, passed up Njai, and he's a little upset, and so is the crowd. He's upset with himself, and the crowd's on his case as well. Yeah, Porter, Porter had his finger up for alley -oop, and Njai was like, you need the ball, man, I need it. Yeah, he had too many options. But Hurts, he's hot. He said, look, he might be playing the game today. I'm going to put up another one. And again, Porter knocks it away. Duke is rolling, so Cincinnati, who lost the other night, a controversial ending for them, leaving Auburn and Connecticut as the only unbeaten teams in Division 1A. Porter failed to draw iron that time. And again, uh, Cliff Ellis wants him to utilize a little clock. putting on a dribbling exhibition. Oh, the iron unkind in that sequence. Don't forget, coming up next, Syracuse at Georgetown, Indiana at Purdue. Dupay rejected by Njai, but Mamadou picks up the foul. 
Mamadou not happy about that elbow he got from Miller. By the way, the executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry Ewart. The coordinating producer of NCAA basketball is Bob Dikas. Today's game produced by Victor Frank, directed by Rob Dustin. The associate director of today's game is Sean Gertrichon. And the broadcast associate, Andrew Hahn. Our thanks to all of them. Our stats man, Supreme Scotty Alexander, giving us all the proper numbers. And Jay Hertz had plenty of them. A great day's work for him. You see him taking a seat next to Mike LaPlante, Eugene Harris, and Shannon Weaver, that staff belonging to Cliff Ellis that's assembled this outstanding talent that is now 17-0 with today's victory, 5-0 in the SEC. One minute remaining, one minute. This is a bit of a coming out party for Auburn. Many people across the country know very little about this team other than of Porter's presence and what he accomplished at Chipola Junior College in the state of Florida. But now at this time of the year, it's being 17 and 0, believe me. Finally, at long last, Porter knocks down a three-pointer. And on what has been a very poor day shooting for him, he has 13 on 4 of 12. Injai rejection. Out one more time. College basketball, Tim. You're witnessing the coronation of a proud tradition reborn. And Porter just continued to play hard. He didn't stop playing hard. That's some good results. drop their third game of the year. They're three and two in conference play. And for Chris Porter and this young Auburn team, 17 and 0. Look out. They're making some percussion in the deep south. Back in a moment. CBS sports coverage of the road to the final four is sponsored by Chevy S10. Like a rock. Penzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Penzoil. And by Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? We mentioned at the top of the show that uh, this is an Auburn team that has learned to walk the walk and talk the talk. Well, today they can toot their own horn after really blowing out Florida with only a one point lead at halftime. Coming up next, Syracuse at Georgetown, Indiana at Purdue. So for James Worthy, Tim Brando, saying so long from the most beautiful village on the plains where Auburn wins 88-69. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.